The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, but not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. We have strange readings, uh, one and all today. Uh, all three of them are very strange. And uh, I actually found myself reading the, the readings before I fell asleep last night uh, and just saying this, uh, this psalm over and over in, again in my mind. Uh, Lord, I love your commands. What a strange prayer to make. Lord, I love your commands. Uh, so often we're familiar with commands being uh, an order, uh, a court order, or a command from our parents, or a law that we must follow. The speed limit is 65. Do not exceed it at any cost. Um, uh, we, we experience law and commands as something that restricts us, that restrains our freedom, that keeps us from hurting ourselves or other people. Uh, it's rarely an object that we love. And here, uh, instead, in the psalm, we say, Lord, I love your commands. Uh, we, I love your commands simply because they are a manifestation of your love for me, right? That you, you set this speed limit of my life uh, because you love me uh, and because it will help me to know you. Uh, your, these commandments, I think, are, are strange to us. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, if we don't have faith, if we don't believe that uh, Jesus is Lord, then that, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It only makes sense because uh, Jesus is, is my Lord, uh, and therefore his commands, uh, in a strange way, are lovely. They're worthy of love. Um, but this is very strange to us, uh, and, and perhaps should be. Um, it's a mark of, of our faith that um, we believe strange things, things that are better than we would expect. Uh, likewise in the gospel, uh, Jesus comes and he says in the midst of this native place with people who know him, who have known him since his youth, uh, who know that he has uh, grown up in the household of Joseph. Uh, they know who this man is, and yet he comes and says, today this prophecy is fulfilled in your hearing, that the, sight, uh, that the blind will receive their sight, that, liberty, that captives will be set free, uh, that this is a year acceptable to the Lord. This is very strange to people who know where this man comes from, who know his history, uh, who feel as though he is bound by the law of his history. And instead, Jesus breaks this. He breaks free of this historical uh, kind of encumbrance and proclaims this is a good year. Uh, and that might be very strange to us here and now, right, that this is a good year. Uh, this is a, day, a year acceptable to the Lord. Uh, 2020, we so often hear 2020 said, this is a terrible year, let's just get past it. Just write it off, it's a complete loss. Uh, instead, Jesus today says, proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. This should strike us as being very, very strange. 
Uh, and it might challenge us to find something lovable in the midst of this unlovely world that we live in. Uh, what is the Lord challenging us to love, to find lovable? Uh, most importantly, I would say it's simply the fact that he is here in our midst, that he comes to us today, especially in the sacrament of the Eucharist. He comes to us in the challenge to not accept things as the world does, but instead to look with the eyes of faith at the ways that the Lord is breaking the law of what we expect. The Lord is breaking the law of what the world says is possible, and instead teaching us how to love. Let's proclaim this good year of 2020 by the way we live our lives today.